2023 is shaping up to be a transformative year for Met Gasco as we deliver uh, gas uh, into uh, the east, Co- the 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 gas short east coast market from our 25% owned uh, gas fields in the Cooper Basin, which you can see the this the arrows point to in the slide. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, just to uh, point out to the investors, just to make sure you read this disclaimer, there's some forward-looking statements, uh, reserve and resource note, and the, the glossary for some of the terms you might not understand. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this is really a highlights, but also a, an agenda for the discussion. Um, uh, you know, so in the next 10 minutes or so, I'll introduce Met Gasco as a company to, to those of you that are not familiar. Uh, I'll then um, summarize our two fields, the Valley field and uh, the Odin field, uh, and the status of these fields. Um, I'll outline the uncontracted gas position. So being in a in a in the East Coast where there's a real gas shortage, I'll just describe how much more we've got to produce into a very hungry market. So it was good to have customers that need, need your product. And then I'll uh, outline the fact that Mel uh, Met Gasco is fully funded uh, for all the all the developments we've got, and talk about our strategy, and then go through the catalyst for the next twelve months. Uh, next slide, please. So, just introducing Met Gasco to those who who maybe don't know who we are. Met Gasco was incorporated in 1999, and is listed in 2004. I've worked for the company for about. Uh, in September for five years as firstly CEO and MD. Um, the uh, the strategy is to grow a you know a profitable business at our Valley and Odin fields, uh, repay down the debt which we'll talk about, and then reinvest the cash flow uh, to to maximise our production and fill up our production hub on the Valley and Odin fields, and then it obviously is to add to our asset footprint uh, and grow the business organically. Uh, on the on the net gas reserve side, we've got approximately 35 petajoules of net reserves and resources through a 25% ownership of the Valley Odin fields. Uh, Valley is in production and Odin is under development. I'll describe that later. We've got a market cap of about 17 million. You can see about a billion shares on market. Uh, in March, we secured a, a 5 million debt facility uh, via two of our largest shareholders. It's the top two that you can see on this graph. And we thank them for the support of the company. Uh, and we're now producing revenue with uh, lots of un- uncontracted gas. So we we believe we are significantly undervalued. We're sitting at about um, uh, at about 70 million market cap. And we certainly think that we uh, fall into the hidden gem category. That uh, is the theme of uh, of this webinar. Next next slide, please. So we're in the East Coast gas market, uh, and you can see the graph in the chart here, the ACCC, uh, this is from an ACCC report uh, published in January, and you can see that uh, there is a shortfall uh, in, of about 30 petajoules in 2023, which we've contracted into recently. Uh, and there's a much greater shortfall uh, for the remainder of the decade, and that's really important for uh, for our uncontracted gas to maximise our production and uh, get get as uh, good a possible revenue while the gas uh, the gas market is so attractive. Uh, the, de- the domestic gas prices are excellent right now, and uh, uh, we, uh, as I said, we we want to make the most of it. Uh, Odin gas marketing was unaffected by the. Uh, last quarter of last year, the government intervention, federal government intervention, they, they tried to put a gas cap on there. Uh, but we've, uh, the recent reviews showed that small small producers, small capital capitalization producers are exempt. And indeed, we, uh, that we didn't get affected by the Odin GSA that we just signed in the last month or so. So the key thing is milk can deliver into this uncontracted, res- or uncontracted reserves into this market. Uh, and I'll, um, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so th- this slide, uh, I won't dwell on this, but it shows that the war in Ukraine has put upward price pressure on domestic gas prices. Uh, but, uh, the the LNG supply, obviously a lot of LNG supply was getting diverted to Europe uh, and it's made the gas prices uh, the way they are. Uh, next slide, please. 
So looking at this chart is really just showing you the, the uncontracted gas position. I'll start at the bottom one with Valley. Uh, Valley, you can see we've, we've contracted to AGL. You're a, you know, obviously a premium customer in the East Coast, up to 16 petajoules through a period of February 23 to 26. Um, uh, and that's, uh, we also took a $15 million prepayment, uh, which, uh, and, and that gas price is going to be indexed over that period. Uh, so we pay back the, the prepayment through a, a reduced uh, gas price, some tiered gas prices. Um, moving on to, to Odin. Uh, so we've, we signed up with uh, Onji, another premium customer. Uh, and that gas is going to uh, the Pelican Point power station in South Australia. That The field will start up in quarter three next year. And we just recently uh, inked that deal, which was excellent for uh, for the joint venture, the, the PRL211 joint venture. The ACCC uh, recently come, came to uh, make a decision for uh, to allow our joint venture to joint market the gas rather than individually market uh, from Odin from post-2024. So the, the Odin uh, or Onji contract was up until the end of 24, and now we're starting to market the gas beyond that. Uh, next slide, please. So Met, Met Gas go into 100% of the valley field. I'll show you a map in the next slide. And I'm proud to say that we commercialized uh, valley in four years. So we owned 100%. We got two Cooper Basin gas experts to, to farm in. Uh, and we drilled through the, uh, the, COVID, uh, the COVID years. And we um, uh, made the most of getting, uh, we had first production in, in 21st of February this year. Uh, and Odin, we've got... Um, uh, we, we're currently in the uh, we're, we're currently sort of in a project phase to bring on Odin One, uh, and that'll uh, occur in quarter three next year. We're also uh, sorry, sorry, quarter three this year. Uh, the oil ex the oil exploration uh, is uh, so. Next slide, please. You can see the two maps where we where we are. Uh, it is very close on the left-hand side to Santos's uh, key infrastructure on Moomba. We're on ATP 2021, where the Valley Field is, PRL 211, which straddles both both of our licenses. As I said earlier, we own 20, 25%. Um, so utilizing the production hub facilities to, to, to tie in further gas discoveries, and you can see the Kinta, the Kinta 1 well, which was the only well drilled in this license, uh, when we gazetted it, uh, and we think that's a gas discovery, but we're going to shoot some seismic and drill an expiration well to see if we can get an oil and a gas target uh, in the next year or two. Uh, so expiration is important. You can see the, the prospects and leads, both oil and gas, and ATP 2021. Uh, we're also analyzing um, uh, business, uh, business development opportunities to, to replicate the success that we've had. Uh, next, next slide, please. So Valley Gas Field, it's a big field. It's 100 petajoules gross. We own 25% of that. Um, and uh, it, there's one well in production, Valley 1, which started in February. There's two further wells, Valley 2 and Valley 3, which uh, we're in the next uh, few weeks, we're, we're um, that restarting one well, Valley 3, and commissioning another well, uh, Valley 2. And you can see the pictures there of the pipeline that was laid into uh, into the Beckler, Santos Beckler facilities, uh, um, which is about 12 kilometer or, or so pipeline. Um, just ultimately, we're doing appraisal through production. So we haven't put out production forecasts yet uh, because we want to be able to test a number of zones in each of the wells. Uh, next, next slide, please. You can see on the on the, the, the right hand side, where Odin one's about six kilometers away from the valley wells. And the fact that we've basically got uh, you know four at four successful wells, they, they've been drilled, completed. The gas is behind pipe, and um, we've got one well in production, bringing two wells on, and then Odin in a few months. So, um, and on the left hand side, just tells you the journey to get there. Uh, so, very proud of getting that gas on in four years, and graduating, become a producer. Next slide, please. So Odin is going to be uh, it's, of all the four wells. Uh, the Odin Odin one is is the best um, 
best conventional well of all four. And you can see that uh, the, uh, the, the, from the flare there, the well was tested at six and a half million standard cubic feet a day at a very healthy 1800 uh, PSI flown well head pressure from two zones, Epsilon and Kalachi. Uh, the well was completed in 2022 and is ready to produce basically gas behind pipe. The JV decided to fast track the production uh, last year, and that involves, uh, and you can see it the, in the yellow box, Odin accelerated connections were put in a pipeline that was installed in January. And all we've got to do is install um, uh, some safety shutdown equipment to the, the Christmas tree and the tie into the, the Valley pipeline. So we're basically piggybacking onto the Valley pipeline, which is, uh, which is uh, already installed. Uh, the long-term Odin pipeline connection, which you can see in yellow at the top, will will go in in uh, the six six to twelve month period or so, and that will take Odin back to where all of the uh, the infrastructure facilities, such as separators, pond, uh, evaporative ponds are, etc. Metgasco is fully funded for the Odin short and long-term uh, projects, and uh, uh, and that's uh, you know it's an important factor for for future investors. Obviously, we're going to get revenue and then uh, reinvest the revenue in developing the the fields, which um, will need more than more than the wells that are currently drilled. Uh, next slide, please. So I've shown you some of the things we've achieved uh, in calendar year twenty two, uh, which you would have seen on a and a catalyst um, if you had looked at our presentations last year. So we're achieving things. And also we've got um, a number of catalysts going forward. Um, and you know that in includes bringing Odin 1 online, recommissioning our two valley wells, uh, and the, the marketing of Odin gas from January 25. Uh, and also the, the future appraisal wells, we're looking at uh, that, the joint venture is looking to drill uh, as we speak. Next slide, please. Uh, so just to conclude, Met Gasco has graduated from being a, 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 an oil and gas explorer to a producer, which we really the team has done an excellent work, really proud of. We've got one field um, on production and another field in, in development, uh, and we'll deliver that gas in Q3. We have a focused uh, onshore gas strategy and are reviewing other opportunities to grow the business. Uh, I'd like to thank the Share Cafe um, team for listening and investors and over to Tim for the Q&A. Thanks, thanks, Kim. We've got quite a few questions here. Um, so just, just going back a step, can you give us a little bit more colour? You've got uh, a, a JV essentially and there's a 75% owner. You guys own got kind of 25% free carry. Is the strategy yep. for this to be funded by those JV partners moving forward? So, you know, we've got our operator, Vintage Energy, they're 50% um, an, an operator, and Bridgeport are 25%, and we own 25%. So as a joint as, as a joint venture, we fund uh, on that proportion going forward. We've funded it. We've got a free well up front because uh, they farmed in. And then after that, uh, Valley One Discovery, we we uh, invested uh, our capital that we raised from our shareholders on a 25% basis. Understood. And there's a question here, uh, given the size of both uh, Venn and Mel, is the board open to merging the two to reduce overheads and gain scale? So our board always look at uh, if an offer or if, or something comes across the table, uh, we look at it on the valuation and, and always would. We wouldn't, uh, you know, just exist for existence sake. We, we uh, if if there's greater value to be a bit of had in some sort of deal like that, uh, we would certainly consider it. Uh, and then any other, um, any other corporate deal that would come our way. But um, yeah, we want to grow the business, obviously. Uh, and But if it's a, a better route, then, you know, then we would obviously look at any opportunity that came our came across the desk as a board. And, and in terms of Odin 1, um, when's that due to start production and, and are you fully fronted? I, I noticed there wasn't a lot of cash on the on the balance sheet. Yeah, the way it was shown in, in the uh, in, in the overview slide is it's, it's a loan note facility. And we have, so there's $5 million uh, of debt and we've only drawn down a small proportion of that so far to get Valley into production. So the, the, the balance of that $5 million, we don't want to, Pull, pull the debt down uh, because you obviously pay interest in it. So it's a very flexible loan note arrangement. 
Uh, and that is in our interest because we can keep our capital in uh, and, and not pay too much interest. So, uh, so we've got quite a bit on our balance sheet. It's just in a loan note that we draw down when we need it. Understood. And, and were you happy with the kind of Odin GSA outcome and the recent ACCC ruling to jointly market gas? We certainly were. I mean, uh, the you know obviously I can't I can't talk about um, uh, gas uh, gas prices in 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 detail because it's uh, commercial in confidence. But we were very very happy with the um, the the deal uh, that we signed uh, with with Onji recently, and obviously the government intervention, which was a threat back in December, has evaporated for small companies. Uh, so we um, you know we want to. Um, We've got a couple of really big gas customers and we want them to, um, you know, and hopefully they'll be interested in our gas going forward. And the ACCC ruling allows from from, from Odin post-25 uh, to be to be marketed and we're in discussions with these uh, customers, uh, not just the ones we have arrangements with, but others uh, as we speak. And and Ken, what are, you, what are your kind of growth plans outside of Vale and Odin uh, in regards to that production hub? Are you, are, you st- are you looking to partner and have these kind of free options, free carry on 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 other ground? Yeah, we we're in the, the one thing about being in production and revenue generating is doors open. Big companies sit in assets; they prioritise the bigger fields, and we're in you know in, in data rooms as we always are, looking at different things. Certainly, whether it's buying into uh, an expiration play or buying, you know, older production assets, you know, we're we're looking at all of that. So we want to we want to increase our footprint in onshore oil and gas across uh, good basins in Australia, and uh, we obviously expiration's important for investor investors looking for a, a price kick, and uh, we'll continue to look at uh, these opportunities. Uh, and as one comes up and we think is good, we'll. I think we've become a bit of a partner, a choice, uh, good to work with. I mean, I've got revenue and, uh, you know, it's good to see.